another most hotly, but probably mo the most longly anticipated bike in the motorcycle universe is the new Yamaha Tenere 700. Uh, we've seen it in a f quite a few rounds of shows now, Mark, I think. It's, uh, it was here last year. In, in a kind of prototype form, um, although as I recall, it looked possibly a, a show even previous to that. Well, yeah, it's been yeah, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? This bike, yeah. and um, as I understand it, dealers still can't get their hands on it for another period of time. Sure. It's, um, they've, they've spent a lot of time developing this motor, so clearly it's a hugely important bike for them, isn't it? Really important. And actually, when we were out in Red Tread this year, uh, riding off road in Spain, it was one of the bikes that Ed was quite talking about quite a lot, actually, and. Uh, you know, obviously there's always this crossover between these adventure style bikes um, being ridden on the road and actually, you know, can you actually do anything off-road with them? No, um, absolutely. And, and, and this is going to be a genuine bike that you really can take off-road. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about this, didn't we, quite a lot with the, the, the new KTM 790 and I, and I think yeah. the, di the distinct difference and I'm probably one of the reasons why it's taken Yamaha the period of time it has to kind of get this ready and, and officially launch it and send it out to the dealers is because they wanted to get the off-road aspect of this bike and its performance off-road absolutely right you know yeah. and, and, and honestly looking at the bike you know when you make a comparison and they're, they're, I'm not sure it's fair to make a, a direct comparison between this and the KTM but when you do make a comparison to me this looks very much off-road orientated I think when you look at all the marketing spiel and you, you, you sort of look at the promo videos, that, that's where you see the bike being shot, right? It's not on road. No. Do I think it'll ride okay on road? I'm sure it will. You know, you're talking about- It's got MTO7 engine, it, which is a cracking engine, oh, twin, I mean, 75 horsepower, nice it, amount of power. I, I, well, I've, I've, I've obviously ridden that bike. Yeah. And um, I remember riding that bike thinking, my God, this is, this is superb. You know, it really yeah. does go. Well, loads of character, loads yeah. of poke, loads of tour, lightweight, you know, low center of gravity. So, so you, you would expect to perform really well you know and having been to been out to the south of spain ourselves yeah you know that the the, the, the yzf 250s that we were riding only made what 40 odd horsepower felt like they ripped my arms off yeah. those bikes. <laughs> so when you think i mean the only thing we don't know at the moment and, and, i mean we can make we, we can probably probably speculate reasonably accurately on how this is going to what this is going to weigh but you know the, we know the bike makes 75 it's going to have a, a, a dry weight between 150 170 kilos you would have so, thought yeah. you know the other thing of course is uh, if it's primarily an off-road bike, you're gonna to have to be able to pick it up. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. you are if, you, if you're me. You definitely have to pick it up if you're me. So, yeah. You know, I um, mean, it can't be super heavy. It no. can't, can it? Obviously, proper off-road bike. Look at the length of travel on the suspension. Yeah. This is going to be a proper tool. It's actually not that hard to get on and off. It's probably no. easier than, than the WR250F by quite some way well, to get on and off. But the other thing that I absolutely love about this bike. Um, and I've not seen this on any other uh, equivalent bike actually, is you know, everything's stuck out that's meant to be stuck out. You know, like look at this handlebar between the front wheel. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you're gonna drop this, and if you are going off-road, you will drop it at some point. Um, you know, you're not gonna smash the, sh uh, the, 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 all the plastics in, I don't think. I think it looks really thin, it looks really well considered. It's got a proper ba uh, sump guard, yeah. not a nod to one. It's well, actually a proper, you know, this is gonna be a proper tool. Well, that, 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 that's, you just mentioned it, how narrow it is. That, as that's another, start, you know, obvious similarity between this and a, and a kind of proper motocrosser, isn't it? A really narrow bike, a one-piece seat. You know, yeah. you're gonna be standing on the pegs the whole time, aren't you? Yeah. So, you know, it's very much uh, focused on that type of bike riding. Although, you know, when you look, if you, if you want to, there's a bike behind us with all the accoutrements on it. So of course. kind of adventure prep, tar panniers, boxes, um, engine engine protector, additional lights. You know, you, you can yeah. you can dress it. It's almost like a Dakar type style, isn't it? It is. It you is. can imagine just just basically just firing it up, riding it in any direction you want, and it'll go there. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. It's just a shame that the bike's taken so long to come to market. No, no. And um, just a final plug. Ed is going to be doing uh, Red Tread. He's going to be doing the. Uh, Tenere off-roading tours uh, into next year. So I think he's taking bookings now for it, although the dates and all that are, uh, are not confirmed yet. But um, you know, if you wanted to try one of these machines, I'd super recommend getting uh, in touch with Red Tread about it. Of course. Uh, Do you think if we mention it during our video, we might we get might get the opportunity to go ourselves? Well, uh, that's what I'm kind of banking <laughs> on. So I think one of the other things we all, we're probably remiss to mention, and I know that the bike hasn't been officially launched yet, and nobody is giving any official figures but I think it's probably sensible to speculate a little bit on, on where it's going to sit price wise and this is important I think because again when you look at the sort of wider panacea of bikes like this although I think this kind of stands alone in some respects 
the word is, the whisper is, say it quietly, less than nine grand. Less than nine grand? Potentially. Wow, I mean, so, that so, is really competitive. And that's the first time you've heard that, and that's the kind of reaction that I had when, when somebody yeah. mentioned to me it was going to be less than, and you kind of- So that, really accessible? Well, exactly. You know, if you, if you think you, you're a budding off-roader and you want to graduate from something like a crosser or something, you're thinking about doing some touring, doing some off-road riding, you know, that, I mean, you, you know, you think what, what, what price is a GS, what price is an 850 GS, you know, we, we, again, we don't know what that KTM 790 well, is going to be, but, but you're going to be, time, you're going to be way north of 10, 11, 12, 30, it could be more, once you've added a few bits and pieces to it, but under nine, well, I guess, you know, it probably makes sense when you well, think. Well, it gives it some context, doesn't it? Absolutely. Based on what we've been talking about. Well, and I, and I think this is the thing with, with the MR, you know, look at the MT range, you know, one of the things really that competitive. is really competitive, really great value motorcycles, and this sits very much alongside that, so, Fingers crossed it is actually that price. Fantastic. So, look, I hope you've enjoyed that first little look uh, for, from Knox uh, about the Yamaha Tenere 700. Can't wait to ride it. We've got all the gear to go with it. <laughs> um, well, please, yeah. uh, please like this video, please comment, please subscribe to the channel too. And please buy some products, bloody hell. <laughs>